continuous random variables and uniform probability distribution. Let's begin by reviewing about few definitions. What is a random variable? It's a quantity whose values are real numbers and are determined by the number of desired outcomes of an experiment. Are there any special random variables? Well, we can group them in two different ways. Discrete random variable and continuous random variable. What are discrete random variables? They're numerical values associated with the desired outcomes. It's either a finite number of values or infinitely many values, but countable. And what about continuous random variables? It has infinitely many numerical values associated with any interval on a number line system without any gaps or breaks. Continuous random variables are measurable. Discrete random variables are countable. Now, what is a probability distribution? It's a description and often given in the form of a graph, a formula, or a table that provides the probability for all possible random variables of the desired outcome. Do probability distributions have any requirements? The answer is yes. If x is a random variable and p of x is the probability of the random variable x, then the sum of all probabilities should be 1. And any probability has to be between 0 and 1 inclusive. Now, what's the continuous probability distribution? It's a probability distribution for a continuous random variable x with probability p of x such that the sum of all probabilities is 1. Any probability has to be between 0 and 1 inclusive. And probability that x is equal to a specific value, it's always equal to 0. Here are a few examples of continuous probability distribution. Uniform probability distribution. Standard normal probability distribution and normal probability distribution. Now let's take a look at uniform probability distribution. It's a probability distribution for a continuous random variable x that can assume all values on the interval a to b such that all values are evenly spread over the interval AB. The graph of the distribution has a rectangular shape. The length of the rectangle goes from A to B. And the width of the rectangle is always 1 over B minus A. Probability that X is equal to a specific number, it's always equal to 0. And probability that x falls between two numbers 
is as shaded here, which can be computed by simply finding the area of the shaded rectangular region in gray by finding the difference of D and C times the width of the rectangle, which is 1 over B minus A. Now let's th take a look at a few examples. The amount of time in minutes that a person must wait at a bus stop is from 0 to 12 minutes inclusive with a uniform probability distribution. We want to draw and label the uniform probability distribution. We want to find the probability that the wait time for a bus for a randomly selected person is exactly 10 minutes. And also we want to find the probability for a wait time for a bus for a randomly selected person is between seven and a half to 10 minutes. Well, we have a uniform probability distribution with A equal to zero and B equal to 12. So the graph will be rectangular and the width of the rectangle will be 1 over 12 minus 0, which is 1 over 12. So we're ready to draw and label the uniform probability distribution. Now probability that the wait time is exactly 10 minutes, as we said, in one of the conditions, this probability will be zero. You can think of it as there is no area for x equal to 10, or the area is simply zero. Now, find the probability that the wait time is between 7.5 to 10 minutes. If we draw the rectangular shape and label it accordingly, the probability that we want is that gray region from 7.5 to 10, which we can simply find it by finding the distance between 10 and 7.5 times the width of the rectangle, do some basic operation, and the probability would be 5 over 24. Now using the last example, we want to find the time rounded to one decimal place that separates the bottom 90% wait time from the rest. So we want the gray region to have an area of 0.9 and the yellow region, of course, will have an area of 0.1. This is the same as finding the 90th percentile. So basically, we want to find K equal to P90. So probability that X is less than K in terms of the area would be k minus 0 times 1 over 12. But we know the area to the left is 0 0.9. So we're going to do a little bit of algebra, and we get k equal to 10.8. Here's another example. The amount of coffee dispensed by a certain machine into a cup is continuous random variable x that assume all the values from 11 to 25 ounces with a uniform probability distribution. We want to draw and label the uniform probability distribution. We want to find the probability that a cup filled by this machine will contain at least 14.5 ounces. 
and we also want to find the probability that the cup filled by this machine will contain at most 20 ounces. And finally, we want to find the probability that the cup filled by this machine will contain more than 16.5 ounces, but less than 18 ounces. And finally, we want to find k such that probability that x is greater than k is equal to 0.3. And we want to explain what this number represents. So once again, we have a uniform probability distribution with a equal to 11 and b equal to 25. So the graph will be a rectangular graph. This time goes from 11 to 25. And the width of this rectangle is 1 over 14. Now find a probability that a cup filled by this machine will contain at least 14.5 ounces will be that gray region. At least means greater than or equal to which is the same as just simply greater than 14.5. So we find the area by finding the difference between 25 and 14.5 times the width of the rectangle, which is 1 over 14. We simplify, and that answer is 0.75. So the probability is 0.75. Now we want to find the probability that a cup filled by this machine will contain at most 20 ounces. So at most means less than or equal to. So again, we're looking for that gray region, the area of the gray region. So we find the difference between 20 and 11 times the width of the rectangle, which is 1 over 14. So that probability is 0.643. Now, let's find probability that a cup filled by this machine will contain more than 16.5 ounces, but less than 18 ounces. So once again, we're looking for the gray region between 16.5 and 20. And we can find this by doing the area of that region, which is the difference of 20 and 16.5 times the width of the rectangle, which is 1 over 14. We do basic computations, and that probability is 0.25. Now let's find k such that probability that x is greater than k is equal to 0.3. So notice we want x to be greater than k. So whatever k is, the area to the right of k is equal to 0.3. And of course the area to the left of it will be 0.7. So probability that x is greater than k in terms of the area of the gray region would be 25, the right number, minus k, the left number, times the width of the rectangle, which is 1 over 12. And we want this area to be 0.3. We can multiply by LCD, solve for k, and k is 21.4. So probability that a cup gets more than 21.4 ounces is, of coffee is 0.3. So 30% more than 21.4 and 70% less than 21.4 ounces of coffee. Now, let's find mean, variance, and standard deviation of a uniform probability distribution. 
So we have a continuous random variable x for all values in the interval a, b with the uniform probability distribution. The mean is b plus a divided by 2. The variance, sigma squared, is b minus a quantity squared divided by 12. And a standard deviation, which is going to be sigma, it's always the square root of the variance, sigma squared. So we have the mean mu, variance, sigma squared, and a standard deviation, sigma. So, a continuous random variable x that assume all values from 5 to 30 with a uniform probability distribution. We want to draw and label this probability distribution. We want to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of the distribution. So we have A, we have B, so the width of the rectangle would be 1 over B minus A, in this case 1 over 25. So this is how it looks. The mean will be mu equal to B plus A divided by 2. So in this case 30 plus 5 divided by 2, so the mean is 17.5. The variance, sigma squared, is the quantity b minus a quantity squared divided by 12. So in our example would be quantity 30 minus 5 squared divided by 12. So the variance for this example is 625 divided by 12. And the standard deviation sigma, it's always the square root of sigma squared. So we take a square root of 625 over 12. So standard deviation sigma is approximately 7.122. I hope this presentation helps you understand uniform probability distribution and a quick review of uh, different types of random variable and what they represent.